All right guys, while we're on a roll talking about fixed blades, and I have a few more fixed blade videos to make, especially because you guys love them, today I thought I would do a fun kind of video where I'm not gonna be quite doing any hard use testing just yet, but did I buy the wrong knife? And what I mean is, if you guys have been around on the channel for any length of time, you know that I have the Chris Reeve Knives Pacific, the seven inch version um, that is non serrated, and it is very near and very dear to my heart, but, I have a friend who let me borrow his five and a half inch bladed green beret. And today I'm gonna to talk about did I get the wrong knife and why I actually like the Pacific quite a bit. Now I might end up grabbing the Pacific uh, for this video, I might not. I feel like it showed off in so many videos, but um, this is, like I said, the green beret. It is also made by Chris Reeve Knives. And I wanna say, if I remember correctly, my friend got the newer version. So I think this one's in CPM 4V and that part, that part I actually am jealous about because I really do wish I love my CPM S35 VN and it is a great steel but the 4V I think is just a little bit more fitting of a true like outdoors wilderness blade and so let's jump into this blade and talk about did I get the wrong knife so first off, I have to say, I really don't think I did. And the biggest reason why is because the Pacific, in my opinion, like between the two, the Pacific and the Green Beret, the Green Beret was designed with a little bit more fighting or kind of combat knife in mind. And if you look at it, even in its style, it almost looks like from a side profile, more like a dagger. Uh, and that's partly because it has this very leaf shaped, you know, unsharpened swedge that's very long, like the swedge technically starts like actually back here like you guys can see how far back that starts but it truly gets more swedged of course once you get about there but overall this is a you know kind of leaf shaped spear point blade and another kind of point to add to that is that you have these very pronounced um top and bottom guards. So when you hold this knife, it's very well locked in. Once again, a very dagger-esque. Whereas on the Pacific, it does technically still have a top and bottom guard, but the top guard is a lot more of a ramp. So it's more like a suggestion as opposed to this, trying to override this top guard, like say, unless you you know tr truly choke up, which you can still do on this knife, and I do appreciate that. But unless you choke up, they're really isn't any getting over this ramp. So in a traditional, like say you want a feather stick or do any kind of uh, work like that, you're going to hold the knife like this or like this. And if you try to hold it like this, your, you know, the middle portion of your thumb is just resting right on that ramp. And it is not necessarily uncomfortable because the ramp is pretty well, you know, chamfered, but it is definitely not designed for that purpose in mind. So I will say the Pacific, I give some points to because the Pacific is a little bit more um, utility knife oriented. And I don't think, to be clear here, I don't think the Pacific or the Green Beret were ever designed as specifically survival and or bushcraft knives. That's why uh, a lot of people, once again, much to their chagrin, I modified my Pacific in ways where, you know, on my Pacific, I actually took or rounded off the top guard or ramp so that it didn't get in my way. And I did a handful of other modifications to my Pacific to make it more wilderness wilderness focused. And so I do think that the Pacific was designed more for um, utility, but still was a combat knife at the core. And so that's where a lot of people, you know, kind of argue with me about like, you chose a combat knife as your, you know, go-to survival knife. And technically, you know, I can do whatever I want. It really doesn't matter. I mean, people choose things like the Topps Tom Brown Tracker. Um, you know, there's plenty of other kind of offbeat selections. So for me, I'm like, you know, y y everyone can do their own thing, but in my opinion, I do think the Pacific is a little bit more at least easily modified for wilderness um, life. And to be fair, I do know personally a handful of people who have listened to me have actually gone out, got Pacifics, CRK Pacifics, and they did the same exact modifications that I did. And they love their Pacifics just as much as I love mine. So I will say um, I do know some people out there and people have sent me some like Instagram uh, posts and pictures 
or they have actually modified their Pacifics in a very similar fashion to mine. So anyways, getting back on track to the Green Beret. Um, the Green Beret is really cool. The other thing I dislike about the Green Beret when it comes to wilderness use, um, and once again, this is still a fantastic knife, and if I had to choose it, I definitely would. Like this is still pretty high up on the list um, of wilderness blades to choose or you know blades for wilderness use but the one thing that kind of detracted me from the green beret and I, once again i get this question a lot of like what should i go with the green beret or the pacific but this is something to keep in mind and that is the grind so first off this grind I'm trying to feel, I feel like it is still hollow grind. However, regardless to whether it's a flat or a hollow, it is the blade profile and the blade grind is far more narrow on the um, green beret. Once again, meaning that it's more kind of designed to be like a dagger, kind of a stabbing knife and less designed to be a cutting knife. So on the Pacific, and not only is it a wider blade, but the grind starts higher up on the blade material, removing um, more material, reducing that edge thickness or the thickness behind the cutting edge and making it a better cutting knife. Now, one thing I do have to say, outside of this top guard, one thing I do actually really love about the Green Beret is its handle. I will say I do think the handle on the Green Beret, much to my disappointment, is actually more comfortable. And I will say it's because these deep scallops that are not present on the Pacific's handle um, exist here. So you can really wrap your hand into this grip and it is so much, so much, maybe not so much. It is, the Pacific is still very comfortable, but it is noticeably a little bit more comfortable to wrap your hand around the Green Beret. So I will give the Green Beret the ergonomics. Don't get me wrong, both of them are actually incredibly comfortable knives. And once again, Chris Reeve has done a fantastic job with their micarta because it's hard to tell, you know, just looking at this knife sitting here, but if you actually pick it up and I'll zoom you guys in here a little bit, you can see that there's ribbing um, on this um, micarta. And this is something that they started with, I believe the Nyala, I believe it is like N-Y-A-L-A. -A. Um, but there was a fixed blade that they made that was like a lightweight hunting fixed blade that had micarta handles. And they did this ribbing very similar to this. And I love it because it's very, like it blends in with the micarta. So you can't necessarily notice it until you really look and then you see like this ribbing, but you do whenever your hand is on the blade, you really feel it. And it actually is insanely grippy and the Pacific has something slightly similar it's a little bit different but it's almost this kind of like textured like rock pattern to it um, almost like stippling but on micarta so it is actually really um, really cool to see and I will say both knives are incredibly comfortable but the green beret probably is just a little bit more comfortable however like I said the biggest reason why I chose the Pacific over the green beret is that it goes back to blade shape blade shape and blade grind. You have a higher grind, like a higher up grind on the Pacific, lending it to a little bit more slicey of a blade. You also tend to have a just wider blade and uh, it just tends to be a little bit more practical when um, actually doing field work. Now, as far as thickness goes, they're both, I wanna say about 0.18 to 0.20. So just under a quarter inch thick, closer to 530 seconds, though I think 530 seconds is 0.17. So it's, it's in that territory of 530 seconds and a quarter, in, or definitely under a quarter, but like, uh, what is it? three sixteenths and five thirty seconds. So it's like right around that territory. So it's a nice thickness in my opinion. I feel like it's a thickness that makes the knife stout and robust. Like obviously it's not gonna be like a little like slicing blade. Like it's not gonna be thin and slicey, but for a wilderness blade where your objective is legitimately to, you know, be able to cut things, but also baton through, you know, larger, heavier duty pieces of wood. I like this thickness because it bridges that gap between, you know, you know, having a knife that's agile and you know flexible um, for a variety of tasks so either way personally in my opinion both are excellent knives I really don't have anything against either the Green Beret or the Pacific but I definitely did not buy the wrong knife in my opinion I like the Pacific a little bit more um, than I do the Green Beret but both are really freaking fantastic blades and absolutely if 
if you can, these things are so worth it. And you know, lastly, in summary, I get a lot of people who probably aren't even watching this video at this point, but I get a lot of people in the comments that are like, you know, you're the only, you know, bushcrafter or survivalist to run around with a Chris Reeve knife specific. It's just a bougie, you know, $500 knife. And it is true, it's expensive. And it is true, I'm probably one of the only YouTubers to really, you know, bring videos to bear on these Chris Reeve fixed blades. But trust me, um, a lot of these things are actually out in the wild. And it's kind of like Strider knives that once you get in the know, once you understand like you're in the knife community, you'll actually end up finding out that, I mean, once again, like even the Pacific was literally designed for special forces groups operating in the Pacific. Like that's how it got its name, right? And so you end up finding out that a lot of these Green Berets or as their military designation is the Yarborough, um, you'll find a lot of Yarboroughs and Pacifics out in the wild. And honestly, like you'd be pretty impressed and I think pretty mesmerized at the places these things have been and the things they have actually done with people even like way more legitimate than myself, right? Like I'm a guy that likes to go out and recreationally, you know, build shelters and fires and, you know, do stuff in Alaska that I think is fun, right? Well, these guys are, you know, like doing a lot more and, uh, you know, they are definitely pretty cool. So anyways, unfortunately, you know, a lot of those people, um, they obviously can't talk about what they do and they obviously don't want to talk about what they do. So there is a surprising amount of knives out there or these knives out there doing the Lord's work, so to speak. You just don't really see it and you don't really hear it. So I'm glad that I can be like, be one of the few that actually has these, the, this knife, um, the Pacific specifically. And uh, you know, these things are freaking dope. So if you ever get the chance, they are definitely a ground knife, but if you get the chance to get one, definitely don't pass it up. They are incredible. They are expensive, but I can tell you like of the expensive knives, these are some of the knives that like do not let you down. They do not fail. And if for some weird reason they do fail, Chris Reeve will absolutely take care of you. So anyways, guys, as always, God bless and I'm out.